So Les, thank you for the opportunity today to give you a bit of an overview of, of the recent uh, uh, financial situation for the City of Grand Forks. Uh, we are going to be doing a public presentation of this report in the near future. But to, to walk you through a little bit of the details of it today, uh, that maybe have created some, uh, some, some, I guess some different opinions in the community. Uh, but let me start with the, the reality of the situation for the City of Grand Forks is that we're living beyond our financial means. In the 2011, uh, in 2011, Council City Council marked upon the development of an asset management plan. And the asset management plan is a plan that delineates all of your assets and takes a, a, a total inventory of what you own and what you have to replace based on the fact that you own them or should you not choose to replace them. But what we've done here is we've gone through this and we realize it has taken over a hundred years for our community to develop uh, this inventory of assets. And over time, assets don't care and they don't have feelings, they don't have emotions. What assets do is they just deteriorate. Uh, they just like, uh, just like uh, people over time, we get older and the same thing with assets. They don't last forever. So, but we do have some critical needs that we have to address right now. Uh, some of these are, are outlined in this report and I'll go through them later on and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about some of our critical needs that we have not been able to address over the short term and the long term because we have not been had this type of critical thinking over over the uh, the last hundred years. Uh, we have now been put ourselves in a position when council embarked upon this in 2011 and that's where we are today. Uh, we are responsible for, for providing uh, a series of uh, services to our community and these communities are, are services that the community expects to get but there's a cost to delivering those services. So what we're doing now is taking a look at our books and, and determining what it is that we can afford to provide and we're going to go out to the community and talk to them about that. But the reality is that we're, we, we have to deliver these services in a socially, economically, and environmentally uh, responsible manner. Uh, and in order to do this, we, the responsibility piece is important. And Urban Systems took this report for us many years ago and, and they embarked upon it. And in 2012, I started onto this uh, pathway with the city and now we're looking at the, the next phases of it. And the next phase is for this for the city to consider is their financial position. Without putting the burden onto the taxpayers solely, we have to find a way to do, uh, do things a little bit differently, a little bit more responsibly. Uh, so some of the things for our council to consider and for the community to consider are the levels of service that we, uh, that we provide for our community. When I talk about level of service, I'll give you an example. It would be, uh, for instance, a pothole on the road. Would it be repaired in 24 hours? No, the level of service may be reduced down where it may have to wait for 72 hours or maybe uh, five days for that pothole to be replaced because we don't, we don't just simply have people waiting at the, uh, at the call for our customers from uh, citizens to go out and do these repairs. Uh, we have to look at the reduction of our full-time equivalent to employees. That's inside and outside. It's a balanced approach, so we make sure that we are uh, considering everything that we can do. Right now, we have a little bit. We, we have the, har the the cart in front of the horse. We're living outside of our means. Uh, we have to increase our revenues, and 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 in a balanced approach, what we're talking about here is um, uh, looking at uh, a moderate tax increase. We're looking at eliminating the need to do the borrowing, and I'll go through that a little bit later on. Uh, a, a moderate increase in the electrical rates. Uh, um, uh, we have to look at our water rates and our sewer rates because currently they only cover the operating costs. They do not cover the costs for any future replacement. So that's what we're dealing with today. They only cover those costs. That's important for, for everybody to realize because should we need a new pump, we are not putting any money away to replace those pumps because we're only covering our operating costs. So we can either ask the customers for more or we can reduce our costs. And that's what we're talking about here. Rather than uh, simply just going to the, to the, to the uh, constituents and saying, can we please have more money through a rate increase? We want to take a balanced approach to this. Um, addressing fees and charges. So fees and charges. So we're going to be addressing those fees and charges. And our economic development has been a key priority for our council. So increasing the tax base, uh, ensuring that we are seeing positive growth, so we are generating more revenue. And while we're generating that revenue, we're not trying to spend more just because we're generating more. So we're, we are taking a balanced approach uh, and all of this stuff is still going to be considered by council. So all of this stuff will be upcoming throughout the next, through the 2016 budget process and it will be changing our approach and how we, we uh, deal with these things. We are, we're, we're talking about not borrowing the $5.5 million. The $5.5 million represents 4% of our overall assets that we need to re, re, uh, replace. 4% of our total value and that represents a 13% tax increase on its own. Just to fund the, the 
borrowing of $5.5 million, it will cost the residents of Grand Forks 13% a year for 25 years, just to service that alone. And that's, we felt as though we needed to revisit that because the, the, we did have the referendum to, to go ahead and borrow that money, but we, we thought we'd take a longer look at things and, and try to plan out for the future for the long term for our city. And this plan that we're going to show you does that for the long term. And it takes, uh, it takes that initial burden off of the, off of the, uh, the residents. Um, one of the things we're going to have to do is we're going to have to look at service levels and risk management. Uh, we're going to have to look at uh, uh, maintenance will be structured uh, and focus on assets rather than looking at uh, us uh, and, our, uh, and our staff running, uh, running around doing different things. We've got to focus in on our asset management. We talk about risk. Uh, risk is going to be, this is an example of risk. This pipe here, this piece of pipe here, our engineers have said that it is nearing its life expectancy. You can see the little bit of the barnacling on the inside of the pipe. But if we're able to maintain this pipe uh, a little bit better and look after it, we can stretch out the life of this. So this is what we're talking about with risk. We're saying that we're willing to take more risk as a city uh, and utilize this pipe for a longer period of time. Now, that's not the same for every pipe in the ground, but these are, this is an example where we get a sample from our pipe and we're able to analyze it and prove it out to our risk, uh, our risk tolerance. Um, service levels, service in the, in, in the, uh, in the community. Um, you know, it might mean that the, the snow removal on side roads might take a little bit longer. Uh, it might mean that uh, uh, we have to prioritize it. We can't just be running out the door every day because we simply can't afford to live within that type of program. We would love to be able to do that, but we know that it comes at a cost. So what happened when the, uh, the asset management plan was undertaken, it said, what infrastructure do we have? Where is it? What is it worth? Uh, what is the expecting remaining life? What needs to be done? What needs do we have? How much will it cost? And what, how do we ensure long-term ensure long affordability? So when we look at this right now, our water system, our water system is worth a value of $27 million to replace it. It has a remaining life value of $14 million, therefore 14% is, is uh, uh, needing to be addressed, or 52% is remaining life. What we have right now is we have an infrastructure deficit of $1.9 million of work that we must do to catch up to the, the schedule of replacement. Uh, our sewer system is worth $25 million. Um, this number is, is, uh, needs to be adjusted. Um, but we have to invest $4.7 million into that right now to catch ourselves up. The, the uh, storm system we have in our community is worth $5 million. It needs some money invested into it as well. Our electrical system is worth $9 million. The roadways are worth $34 million. We have an infrastructure deficit on our roads of $20 million. And that money has to come from somewhere. And we can reach out to the government for some money, but they're not going to give it to us all. They're not going to give us all of it. We have $20 million in buildings that we own, and we have $4 million in fleet. What we're saying, and some of the key numbers that we need to focus in on here is we have a backlog of money that we've needed to invest into our community of $32 million. $32 million has, is, is, we're into our line of credit that we needed to have spent. We don't owe that money, but we owe it to ourselves. That money is based on the fact that we need to do these things. And, and we're accumulating $3.8 million in deficit a year. So every year we don't do something, every year we don't replace a road, we don't replace a water main, and we stretch that out, we acquire more of a deficit. So, and we're required to calculate that. But our community is worth $127 million, and we need to keep things up to standard. And up to standard means that it's safe, that it's passable, that it's reducing the risk, and so on. So as we move through this, the key elements for us to remember here are we have $32 million that we should have invested and we have 3.8 that we need to invest each year. So moving along, what's happening here is we have a sustainability gap that we're trying to fill. So what we're doing with our piece is we've been working hard over the last several years to try to fill, that, uh, fill this gap and try to leverage money for the future. So we need to be up at this line here. This is where we need to be funding ourselves at $3.85 million. If we can start reducing our costs and do a combination of a tax rate increase and get ourselves to a point where we can actually afford ourselves, we can find ourselves sitting in and around this area here. And that's what we're doing right now is trying to balance our overall impact in the community. 
Right now we're investing at around $350,000 a year. And that means that we're not filling our sustainability gap. So what we're doing is we're looking at this and we're saying, how do we get there? So what have we done? Some of the keys to this, what have we done? So we have to get a 20 year outlook, but we need a 100 year outlook as well so we don't pass the burden on to the next generation and, and make the pro exasperate the situation. So we need to consider adjustments and deferral of projects in the long-term capital plan, which we've been doing, uh, which you'll see in many projects where roads should have been paved or not, they've just been deferred out. How, we've been lobbying UBCM and FCM for asset management grants. The city's been advocating that uh, at UBCM every year, and further, we've been advocating that uh, as, par as part of our participation with Asset Management BC. Uh, reviewing existing tax rates and fees. Check, economic development, we've been working so hard on that. Uh, getting our Open for Business Award, making sure that's important because we need to get outside revenue in order to help sustain ourselves. Seek alternative uh, uh, streams of revenue. We've been looking at that. Uh, without going in competition with our, our private businesses and killing our own economy, we have to try to find things that are going to balance that because we don't want to be in competition with small business. We want small businesses to thrive. Complete a triple bottom line uh, risk approach to capital planning. We do that each year and we're going to take a deeper approach to that this year. We're going to be considering environment, uh, financial and overall operational impact. Uh, improve maintenance management. We're working hard on that right now uh, with our new systems we're putting in place so we can better tell you where the, uh, uh, the repairs have been taking place and we actually have a living model that will work for the future. Consider re considering regional partnerships. Adjusting levels of service to improve operational efficiencies. This is where the tough stuff comes in. This is where we have to adjust our level of services because it's, it's not unlike living in your home when you, uh, you know that if your costs in your home are getting too high for you, you either have to bring in more money or reduce your costs. It's a, it's a simple equation. But it's not simple in respect to, uh, we deal with tougher stuff here when it comes to people and, and, uh, and people that have committed themselves to the organization. Developing a set of performance measures. You know, how are we going to do that? One of the things we want to be able to do is report back to the community. How are we, how are we performing when it comes to the spending of the money? How is it working out dollar for dollar? Develop financial policies and strategies to, to achieve financial sustainability. The last thing we want to do as a local government is to be always going with our hat in our hand to the province. Um, it's important that we talked a little bit about this, that you know, the borrowing of, of $5.5 million, which was received uh, a cent from the electorate in 2011, and, and that represents a 13% tax increase for 25 years. It's an important piece for us to consider. So right now, here's a graph, and here is our expenses, the blue, and here's our brown line. We are, we are not bringing in enough revenue to cover our expenses. Uh, it's a simple, uh, simple equation. We either need to have more revenue or we need to reduce our expenses. So, so the strategy for achieving long-term sustainability uh, is, is uh, outlined in the report, but the most, important, the most important piece of this is balance. It has to be a balanced approach. We don't want to just simply say to our council, please go to the, uh, the, the uh, residents and ask for higher taxes. Um, we actually have a balanced approach here. And what I'm going to show you here is, is our expenditures per capita. So per capita, we spend almost uh, $2,635 per capita compared to Golden, Oliver, Lansville, Roslyn, Fernie, Sparwood, Creston, Peachland, and Vanderhoof, who are considerably less than us, but we're at the top end of that. We look at our, um, uh, our expenditures for 2014. So our expenditures for 2014 were general government, $1.7 million. Protective services, fire department was, was uh, $579,000, which is shared in part by the regional district. Solid waste management and recycling, $187,000. Health social service housing, $118,000. Development services, $209,000. Roads and transportation, uh, $1.2 million. Parks, recreation and culture, $823,000. Water service, the cost to run the water utility, $747,000. Sewer service, $688,000. Amortization of our debt, we're required to do this, $1.5 million. Uh, total expenses, $11.8 million. So how are we going to achieve financial sustainability? We have all these costs. Everybody has an expectation uh, when it comes to these services. Everybody would like to see us be putting in more. We want to work with and, and, uh, uh, in a diverse community. People want to see different things. So what we said to council and uh, the community is we want to start by reducing our, uh, our operation staff outside uh, by three FTEs. Uh, that would represent a, a long-term savings of, a, of approximately $300,000.
We want to reduce our administration staff uh, by two FTEs. Uh, we want to find efficiencies within, from within our organization uh, as they arise. Now when I say three FTEs in the outside works, we already have one that we haven't replaced. Uh, so we're actually taking a balanced approach so there would be two and two. And that would equate to uh, the total number there. So it is balanced and fair. We didn't, we didn't want to make it uh, appear that we're just going to simply take from the outside works. We want to make sure that uh, we were doing this across the line because we have to reevaluate this in the future. We have to consider how we invest our slag revenue. Uh, council has to talk to the community about this and say, you know, does this become part of your asset management plan or would you rather see your taxes uh, go up? Um, but one of the things we have to look at is, is um, how do we invest the, uh, the slag revenue? Uh, that puts us at, uh, that changes our revenue stream just by those three actions in itself. Uh, that gives us uh, uh, $785,000 uh, that we, could do, we get to invest back into our infrastructure. So there, there's a, a great piece there for us. So as we do this, uh, that's, that's some of the short-term actions. So then we engage uh, long-term as we go through this process, we engage the public about conversations of levels of service. We reevaluate the plan. Uh, we develop a set of performance measures and report regularly. We complete and review our tax rate structure. And by implementing short-term actions identified in the infrastructure plan with some other modifications in there by reducing our operating costs, we're hoping to get close to a million dollars that we would have to be able to put into infrastructure renewal. Because remember right now, you need, we need to be putting in $3.8 million, so this will put us closer to a million, but we got more. Uh, the idea behind this as we move through is, is uh, uh, change. Change is difficult in the community. Uh, but somewhere along the line we have to make it. And on the, unfortunately, um, it's difficult and it does have casualties, but at the end of the day, uh, this, this type of change doesn't necessarily need to hurt. Uh, council can, uh, can, is responsible to implement these opportunities for change and consider the impact and how to use, utilize this. So council is always considering this and when they're providing levels of service, people are asking for more, council to do more. But the reality is uh, we have to do this uh, from, we have to consider this. It's not necessarily set in stone. And the potential barriers are political, legal, labor, and contractual obligations. And we, and we realize that. So what does the next three years look like? If we did a, a, a moderate tax uh, electrical rate increase over the next three years, and council consider this in the budget, but this would be proposed to them, uh, they could generate another $400,000 that would be putting towards infrastructure renewal. So now we're at $1.4 million. We had the other pieces that I talked to you about, and now if we did a moderate uh, electrical rate increase, a moderate would be like you know, approximately 3% a year. Uh, that would be putting in $400,000 into the, uh, uh, the electric, uh, or into the asset renewal fund. Uh, looking at raising residential tax rates, keeping us below uh, the threshold in our region, uh, still being middle of the road, if we did that, that would equate to, uh, and the mayor said it best to me, was a dollar a day. A dollar a day would put us at seven hundred or six hundred and seventy thousand dollars more. So now we're approaching uh, uh, one point seven million dollars. Um, we need to uh, consider the development showcase and projections for land use. Identify other streams of revenue dollars. Eliminate the need for borrowing, so we don't just go into our line of credit and get stuck there. We need to not do that as a community. We need to be cash positive so we can actually address our issues and we have several that I'm going to talk about. Uh, eliminate the acquisition of access. Consider the triple bottom line. Do we need it? Do we want it? Can we afford it? It's nice to have but can we really afford it? Review the subdivision servicing bylaw uh, requirements. So over the long term uh, consider the implications of having sidewalks down every street because if we have sidewalks in every street then we have to fund and replace every sidewalk. Uh, and we need to consider that maybe trails and pathways are a little bit better way to go. Amend our development cost charge bylaw. So this is a bylaw that we're required to have and it requires assent from the province. Uh, but what we do with that fund, uh, those funds are when developers develop in our community, they give us certain funds uh, that are outlined in our bylaw and we would reallocate those to better suit our needs from an asset management perspective. Um, determine formula for allocation of revenues and reserves. So, so what happens is when we have what's called the surplus and everything thinks there's an infinite pile of money in the surplus, but what happens is when we have a surplus at the end of the year, we take a council authorizes us to put that into uh, the different funds so it, it, it lives in perpetuity there and gets allocated towards specific uh, assets. Um, not labor, not consulting, but what it is is dealing with those assets uh, for replacement. Uh, projections for revenue, we've been doing that. Uh, asset management tax, uh, tax rate separated. So we want to identify that so we can communicate out to the public and show the public what they've been getting and where the money's been going. 
um, communicated on utility rate bills. Revi re revisit and evaluate the plan every two to five years because as we do this, we have to understand what the impacts are. We know that we took, it took us 100 years to get there, but we need some time to review this and consider how it's looking. Is it working well? Is it working bad? Uh, is, everything starting to, is everything starting to move in, in a positive direction or negative direction? What's happening? Develop a proactive, proactive management measures to align with the asset management plan. So when we're talking about this, we have to consider all the aspects. So everything that we do as a community, whether it's council's endeavors, uh, management's endeavors, it has to align with our asset management plans. Review the water and sewer rates in three years. Once we've implemented the water metering program and we, hope, and we review the water consumption pieces, we have to review that and communicate it to the public. Develop a reserve of surplus policy to ensure the process continues into the future. We don't want this to just simply fall off and die because what we're doing right now is we're getting our financial house in order. Uh, develop a financial management policy to ensure the continuity of our asset management plan. And, and what we're saying is right now, this is what we're proposing. What's going to happen is this is all going to be discussed throughout the develop or through the, uh, the budget process. And the budget process is done at the committee of the whole and the community would be invited in to talk about this. But uh, we want to ensure that everybody is uh, aware of what's going on here and, and participating in that discussion. Um, some of the things that are imminent for us right now that we have to do is we know that we need a new well, uh, the second street well. We've talked about that, but that's $1.1 million. Our sewage treatment plant, our, our ponds are filling up with uh, biosolids. Uh, we have to do that. That's going to be close to a million dollars to address that issue. Uh, we have 22nd Street that requires paving in a multi-utility project. Uh, that one along with 3rd Street, you see the sinkhole on 3rd Street, uh, that is in itself close to $3 million. And we have $20 million in, in, in backlog and paving. We need a roof on our reservoir. Uh, we have. Um, uh, the east side reservoir expansion that we might need to do. Um, as we look at these things, we have to start addressing our critical needs. We have a water main in the river that is exposed, that is leaking, uh, that feeds critical fire protection to our key industries that help us survive as a community. It's provided to Roxall and Interfor. If we lose that, uh, that fire protection, uh, it could be catastrophic to our community. So we need to move that water main out of the river. As a community, we have to consider these things, and it's not our fault. What we're doing is we're just simply addressing these, and we need to do it. Uh, we have some stuff that's critical and imminent for us today. I have some uh, spreadsheets left here that I could walk you through. So earlier I mentioned the amount that we need to have. Uh, I said to you about $32 million in infrastructure deficit. What I had suggested there, in our capital reserve fund here, which is D, we need $32 million in there. We have $46,000. We need $32 million. We only have forty-six. We know that we have slag where we have $1.1 million uh, of revenue going into that. Uh, we know that we have gas tax, which is structured from the federal government that tells us how we can spend that money. Uh, we don't just get, simply get to put that in our operating budget. Uh, we have a, an equipment replacement fund of $529,000, uh, which shows us that we're putting a lot of preference to our equipment reserve, but we weren't necessarily putting it to our capital reserve where we might need to put it. We have land sales, uh, where we have uh, acquired land and people have purchased that money, uh, that land from the city. Uh, we have $213,000 there. The key number though is this one. We need $32 million in this account and we have $46,000. The tax, tax sale, um, through uh, taxation sale, we acquire properties. Uh, parking, we have a parking fund that we have $4,000 in from, uh, from back when, uh, um, uh, when a developer provides us the development, they have to give us money in lieu of parking. Um, slide sales, we went through, we went through the gas tax, climate action fund. So we're required to be, cli or required to be uh, carbon neutral. Uh, when we do not achieve our carbon neutrality, uh, we pay ourselves $25 a ton that goes into a uh, fund that council will look at in the future, uh, and what, when they're ready to, uh, a climate action uh, plan for the city of Grand Forks. The library has a reserve fund of $24,000 in it, and that's part of the operating expenses that they put in, and anything left over from the operating from the library goes into that fund. So what happens is we have $2.2 million. We have $2.2 million in total, but we're depreciating by $3.85 million a year, so we actually have enough to cover almost half of one year in our total, in these in our reserves. So I'm just going to show you the, the next one. So surplus. So in our surplus, 
Uh, surplus is what we have remaining in our bank, in, uh, um, in our surplus as part of our operating budget. So the financial manager, uh, GFOA standards, suggest that we keep 16 to 20% in our surplus. Uh, and then what that is, is your emergency reserve. So right now in total, in surplus, we have $3.8 million, almost $3.9 million. That's cash that we have available to the city. So what happens is we're, we're expected to keep somewhere in between 2.2 and 2.8 available to react to uh, certain situations. Uh, should we lose a road, a reservoir? We know that everything costs us a million dollars as, as everything operates and unfolds in our large organization because we are worth 127 million. But we look at that, so if we keep that, we have some money left over, what we would do is move, we're gonna ask council to consider moving that over into the, uh, the uh, asset management renewal fund, which would then give us another $1.2 million, which would almost fund one year of our needs. So as an organization, that will put us into addressing one year. So one year of our needs will be addressed. I'm gonna talk a little bit about the borrowing. So the borrowing, so from the borrowing piece, one of the things about the borrowing is we talked a little bit about this, why would it cost so much? If we borrow $5.5 million, we would have two interest payments of $127,000. And we go through this in a principal payment. So our chief financial officer has, has showed us this. Actually, Our chief financial officer has showed us, has demonstrated this. And as we move through 25 years, uh, we know $25,000 equals a 1% tax increase. At an interest rate of 4.65%, this is what it would cost us to fund this, and that would only cover a small portion of our overall needs. We don't want to do that. We want to be able to utilize our own cash. We talk about wages, wages in the city of Grand Forks. Um, if, we, uh, if we look at overall, it represents about uh, before in 2013 and prior years, we've actually seen a reduction in our wages. Uh, it was a 41% of our overall budget. We're down to 39%. We've realized savings over the years. We brought in, we brought in um, building inspection into our organization. Uh, we streamlined uh, uh, that position, so that was a cost savings to the city. Uh, we've, uh, we've not replaced one position in the outside works. Um, and now here we are uh, looking towards further savings and trying to live within our means. So as we look at this, uh, there's all kinds of um, uh, benefits to us, but it does come at a cost. Uh, one of the keys to this um, is some of the things that have changed to our community over the years. Uh, some of the things that people might not consider is we used to get $664,000 from the, from the provincial government for our small communities grant, which we don't, which we don't get anymore. Uh, in 2012, we got 678,000, and in 2013, it was reduced to 317,000 dollars, and the taxpayers had to bear that burden of a, a difference of over 300,000 dollars. The other thing is, we lost between 7,500 or 75,000 and 100,000 dollars in HST rebate that we used to get when they took out the HST. So that was absorbed, and then we had postage increase increases that we 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 wear as an organization because we do a considerable amount of mailing out. So when we look at this as an organization, there's many things that affect us. I think the other thing too is we wanted to, uh, to address this in a, uh, in a balanced approach and we, and we have, uh, uh, we've invited our union to the table to talk to us uh, about this uh, from a team perspective. Um, and, and this is a, uh, a process that we have to do a balanced process. Uh, we have all kinds of things to consider. And there's no, um, in our organization right now, we talked about it from our management team and, and, and the impacts, and it's interesting because we have impacts to our administration as well. Uh, the administration is going to have to uh, have to become a leaner operation in the future as well, and this is part part of the process. Uh, council needs to consider every option that is presented to them. Uh, we, as an organization, we have a responsibility to do that, and that's what we're looking at, and we're going to take that responsibility. It's not necessarily great news all the time, and it doesn't make everybody happy, but the reality is council pays me to do a job and this is what I have to do. I have to present options and review this with council. Council embarked upon this in 2011. Considering this as the overall uh, plan, uh, this was done in 2011 before we started. 
Our management team came into place in 2012. We've been pursuing this. We've been communicating it through the community, uh, open houses, continually uh, uh, developing the process, talking to our team about it on a regular basis. But now we're at the point where we have to make some tough decisions, and these are some of the tough decisions we have to make. And as a community, uh, these can come in different forms. Uh, the reality that we're seeing right now is, is we've, we've, we've uh, done this and complied to our, our requirements under the collective agreement, and, and, and we're starting upon this process, but that is a different process from this. this. This financial analysis and the total asset piece is what we own and how we have to get there. Um, the costs and the overall operating costs of our organization are defined by how we operate and the levels of services that we provide. And, and what services are we going to continue to provide. So as an organization, we have some tough decisions to make, and, and we're hoping they, uh, to have some great discussions about this with our, uh, with our local union. And uh, uh, we know that we can find solutions. Uh, we just have processes that we have to follow, and, and that's what we've done. And I think that's what I, that's it in a nutshell, but we are going to be doing more with this in the, in the near future. We're going to be talking with the community uh, we're going to be talking with uh, council more about this, and we'll and we'll be at uh, different community groups such as Rotary, uh, potentially having an open house at the um, uh, at the gallery in uh, uh, in October to talk more about this. Uh, we want to engage the community. Uh, we want the community feedback on this. Uh, you know, there's going to be a survey going out to the community, asking the community, do you want to continue to pay for services at a higher level, or would you like to reduce your costs? and put that money into the savings that we realize there into infrastructure renewal. These are the questions that we have to ask ourselves, but we want to make sure that this is a balanced approach, that we're considering the residents of the, of the City of Grand Forks, and we're trying to ensure a, a long-term, uh, financially stable, sustainable community. I mean, that is the ultimate goal, and that's been Council's direction to us is make it affordable, make sure that we're staying within that affordability rate, and, and that's what we're working towards. So thank you, Les. Thank you, Mr. Allen.